I've been working on a Pixar movie on and off for about a long time. This is, this is the big moment for an actor in an animated movie. I have four kids. Um, but when I started doing this, I think I only had two. <laughs> Actually, I did. I only had two kids when I started doing this. But it's been the most pleasant experience. I'm getting a little weepy. <laughs> Toy Story 3, our little picture. Story characters have been in our hearts and minds after all these years. We've been thinking about it and wanting to do Toy Story 3 for so long. The toys have just become really iconic characters, and it has to do with a lot of factors. I mean, they're really funny, interesting characters, but the people that voice them, the actors that voice those characters, were also a big part of making those characters great. I know what I'm doing great. I don't know, you can help out once in a while because you need the money. We invited all the core actors back from the classic characters. It was great. It was like a reunion. It's been 15 years since the first Toy Story. <laughs> you look good, Woody. You look good. It's nice that Pixar and Disney brought everybody together. It's, there's a comfort to it. It's a, it's a family comfort. Come back to a lovely, familiar, happy place. <laughs> We've been so fortunate that the talent in all of our films, and in particular the Toy Story films, are just a part of us. They're family. And on this film, we cast a whole slew of new characters. There is no way out of here. <gasps> just kidding. Door's right over there. Buttercup is played by Jeff Garland. There's Dolly, who's played by Bonnie Hunt. Buzz. Oh, that's interesting. Is that Icelandic? We have Trixie the Triceratops, played by the delightful <laughs> Kristen Schaal. Hello. And Trixie. We have Mr. Pricklepants, played by the dashing Timothy Dalton. Well, excuse me. I'm trying to stay in character. Stretch the purple glittery octopus, voiced by uh, Whoopi Goldberg. What did you expect from a girl's toy? I'm not a girl's toy. I'm not. Why do you guys keep saying that? Ken is played by the amazingly talented Michael Keaton. And being Ken is about having fun. Lee and I were blown away by how much energy and improv and passion he brought to that part. Groovy, huh? Yeah. Ken has good genes. That happened to look great in jeans. <laughs> well, hello there. And then finally, we have Lotso. He's played by Ned Beatty, who's a fantastic uh, character actor, kind of a national treasure in the acting community. I feel really wonderful about being a part of this film. I can't express that too much. I knew he would be great for Lotso because not only has he done a lot of comedy in his career, but he's also done a lot of really great dramatic roles, and I kind of needed both. Uh, now bring a little bit of your drawl back Okay, in. a little more drawl. Lee knew what he wanted. It was a question sometimes of finding just the right dialect. We decided to give him this kind of New Orleans drawl because we thought it just made him that much more relaxed and laid back and trustworthy. Lotso basically sounds like he lives uptown in uh, New Orleans. I thought I heard new voices. Welcome to Sunnyside, folks. I'm Lotso Hugging Bear. That's awesome. Part of our process in making Toy Story 3 is the same way that people have been making animated features back since Snow White, and that's that we create a, a, an elaborate story reel. They just showed us the entire animatic, and it lasted exactly as long as the movie itself. They showed it in storyboards, very rudimentary. I thought, story's so good, we all got emotional over that one. And gradually, different elements are replaced, like the real actors' voices get put in. Come on, guys. Let's get our parts together, get ready, and go out on a high note. I'd better find my other eye. Where'd you leave it this time? Someplace dark and dusty. I didn't even work with Don Rickles. We do our lines individually, not as a group. And you don't get the whole script. You just get your pages. So we only know what our lines mean at that particular scene. So this is you making your getaway. You've just robbed a train. And we're thrilled. And you're thrilled. And you're kind of this ninja warrior, right? That's why you did all that. Ay, 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 stuff okay. for it. And we have Lee, our director, who explains the whole story and plays all of the characters. Try a little less, like, breathy. She's okay. sounding a little Marilyn Monroe-ish. Oh, we don't want her... that. <gasps> Voiceover work, I think, is so great because Things are happening around you and you can't see it, so you have to imagine it. And then you also have to make your voice and emotion match what's happening in the scene. So you really have to exercise your, your imagination muscle. Oh, that's just a velociraptor toy down the street. Oh, that's just a velociraptor toy down the street. Oh, that's just a dinosaur toy down the street. That's nothing. 
It's an incredibly complex process. There's whole days that you have to just do grunting and panting and, and breathing. <clears throat> a no sign right here. That's what it says. I heard that was your specialty. I'm guessing that is a... Could you do it a little wetter? There you go. Sorry. Awesome. <laughs> up, up. <clears throat> oh. Oh, ah, ooh, ah. Where's this switch? I love these characters. I helped make Toy Story and Toy Story 2. And so for me, it was like coming home again. It was like working with old friends. The only character that we had to recast, unfortunately, was Slinky Dog. Slink, gather everyone up. Uh, we are gathered, Woody. Because Jim Varney passed away right after we made Toy Story 2. But we've recast him uh, with a really talented actor named Blake Clark, uh, who very much captures the essence and spirit of Slinky Dog's character. Well, how you doing? <laughs> I just wanted to do, do right by the role and do right by Jim. We were friends. I met him in 1980. I was working the door at the comedy store. <laughs> and he, uh, he's from Kentucky and I'm from Georgia. And so we just kind of hit it off. We did a movie together. Ah, who are we kidding? The kid's 17 years old. Nah, we ain't ever getting played with. I try to picture in my mind Jim when I was doing the voice and try to, you know, talk like Jim. What time is it? Is Zorro, why don't you make some fudge? And he threw us out. Okay, awesome. You know, Lee took me really by surprise and I kind of choked up. He said, I think Jim would have been proud, so. I didn't see that coming, and I got tears in my eyes. <laughs> Jim, who was, uh, he was a good guy. Funny, very, very funny man. So you're Bonnie? I'm Andy. Someone told me you're really good with toys. One of the decisions that I made very early on in this film was to reach out to John Morris, the actor who had played young Andy in Toy Story and Toy Story 2. We didn't know where he was. We didn't know if he was still acting. We didn't know if he'd even be interested or if he'd even sound right. But we got his phone number and, uh, and we called and he didn't answer, but we got his answering machine. And the moment I heard his voice on the answering machine, I thought, hallelujah, he sounds great. He still sounds young. And this is Buzz Lightyear, the coolest toy ever made. Look, look, he can fly. The first Toy Story I auditioned for when I was seven I've been involved in these films for 17 years, which is the vast majority of my life. <laughs> and so it's, 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 it's quite profound. So we brought John in from very early on and, and started uh, working with him and recording the beginnings of what became the goodbye Andy scene at the end of the movie. This is Jesse, the roughest, toughest cowgirl in the whole West. And uh, he was very emotional for John, too, because he, you know, he, he's grown now. You know, he's in his early 20s and uh, has gone to college and moved on in his life. And, um, you know, for him, this is about change and a passage as well. I think, I think this whole experience was very resonant for him. It is bittersweet. It, it's, and, and very emotional. And it's been very emotional recording it um, to say goodbye to them. And, uh, and to say goodbye to years and years of love and play and connection and devotion. Okay, now you gotta promise to take really good care of these guys. They mean a lot to me. It was a major responsibility to, to make Toy Story 3, to bring these characters back to life again. But rather than being intimidated by it, I just completely embraced it. The very last shot of the movie, oh is all of our characters. What? Look under your boot, Woody. That's my line. You too, Jesse. <laughs> this is a great relationship because there's just an element of respect for each other. It's been mirrored in a relationship I've got with, with Hank. You got like six words in this one. Thank you for pointing that out, Tom. <laughs> well, it's official. You guys made the wall. You know, I've been so fortunate to do so many things in my career, but I can say that I'm the most proud of the association with Pixar. My favorite place to work. I, I'm just honored to be a part of it. This is such a collaborative art form. The actor's voice infused into the process is very, very fascinating. So what they bring to it is soul. They bring in their soul and their talent, and they breathe this beautiful life into these characters. And what's great is, is I get credit for it somehow, <laughs> you know? Because, because I'm, I've been the voice of Woody for lo these many years. Kids that are in college coming up to me and they say, boy, you know, when you told that neighbor kid in Toy Story 1 to play nice, that really meant a lot to me. And I thought, well, that was my voice. I wasn't 
really, the, I'll take the credit. They're timeless pieces. I mean, they're classics, and they're going to be around forever. After I laid my voice down, and I was like, well, I guess I'm immortal now. <laughs> you know?